Welcome class to the Intro to Java Programming. In this lesson, we will review the enum. You will learn what it is, why it should be used, along with some code examples. Often there are times when you want to restrict the value of a variable to a limited group of values. For example, the days in a week should be restricted to Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The months of a year should be restricted to these 12 months, even a custom group of values for the state of a door could be restricted to open, closed, and locked. A string data type could hold all the possible values. However, we do not need a developer to come up with a new day of the week like holiday, or a new month like smarch, or a new door state like broken. There is a way to prevent the assignment of unwanted values to a variable with the use of the enum class. The enum is a special class that represents a group of constant values that cannot change. The enum is public, static, and final by default. We will cover static and final in a future lesson. Just remember it is publicly available and cannot be changed. The enum is used as a data type for a variable. Imagine we create an enum called door state. A variable called my door state could be defined with the door state enum. The value of the my door state variable is limited to all the possible values declared in the enum. These values are sometimes called fields. Here's an example of all the possible values. Let's build an enum. Here's the enum code for our door state. You should notice that this looks very similar to a class. We start with the access modifier public. Next is the keyword enum, and then the name of the enum. In this case, we are using the name door state. Curly braces will hold all the code used for the enum. Here is a comma separated list of field values. It is common for these values to be all uppercase. It might be easier to show you how to use the enum in our project. Let's go to our basics project in IntelliJ, close any open class tabs. Inside of our main Java folder, let's create a new package. We're going to call it enums. Let's create a new class called door state. If you have the chance, change it from class to enum. The base enum code should look like this. If this value is not enum, change the keyword by typing enum. Let's make some space, copy in some values. Inside the code block are a comma separated list of values. Remember, it is common practice to use values that are all uppercase. That's it. We now have a door state enum. Let's build a test to prove it works. Inside the test Java folder, look for the data types package. Let's create a new class. We'll call this class enum test. This test will create a new variable that is an enum data type and prove the value can be set. Here is the variable. Door state is the data type, the enum class we just created. My door state is the name of the test variable. Let's delete this value. Now watch as I retype it back in. Door state is the name of the enum. Enter a period to expose all the properties or possible fields. Go ahead and enter in or select closed. The value of the my door state variable is now equal to the enum field closed. Please note, because the enum is public, static, and final, the keyword new is not needed when using or setting the value of an enum. Again, we will cover static and final in a future lesson. The assert will verify the door state dot closed field is equal to the my door state variable. Let's run this test. And it passes. An enum can be used in many situations, but one very common use is inside a data structure. Let's imagine we're working on an adventure game. The players in the adventure game will encounter a door. We should build a door data structure to hold all the properties of a door. To keep it simple, let's have three properties, a name, a color, and a door state. Good question. Should the color be an enum? Well, the color could be a string value and it could come from an enum. If the possible colors are limited to a known population, an enum might be a good choice. It will prevent spelling errors and display compiler errors if another developer uses the wrong color. If the possible colors are not limited, use a string. 
Let's make an enum to hold the door colors. Time for a Coach Joe challenge assignment. Open the Basics project in IntelliJ. Inside the main Java enums package, create a new enum called door color. Use the colors red, green, blue, black, white, and brown. Pause the video to complete this assignment. Let's see if your enum code is similar to mine. In the Basics project, there should be a door color file inside the enum package. And here is the code for the door color enum. You should have public enum door color. Inside the curly braces will be the six colors. Make sure all the colors are in uppercase letters and separated by a comma. Well done. Everyone should have a door color enum. Let's continue with the door data structure. Follow along with me inside the basics project. This should look familiar. Inside the main Java folder, let's right click and create a new package called Adventure. Inside the Adventure package, let's create a new class called Door. Make a little space. Add in these three properties for name, color, and state. The name property will use a string data type. The color property will use the door color enum and the state property will use the door state enum. Make a little space below the properties. Right click. We want to generate a constructor. Select all the properties. Click OK. Let's make a little space below the constructor. Right click. Let's generate all the getters. Select all the fields. Click OK. Your door class should look like this. Now that we have a door data structure, let's talk about the two enums. There are two main uses for an enum. One to hold a value that will not change and to hold a value that will change. The door color will typically not change. The state of the door will likely change. Both properties could have been a string data type, but the enum allows more control on the possible values. The enum is like a class, and yes, it can have a constructor, properties, and methods. Let me show you an example. Let's open the enum test class file. Let's make a little space. Let me first demonstrate a test that will output the two string value of an enum. An enum variable is set to blue. These two lines will output an enum value. One value is directly from the enum, and the other is from a variable. Both use the toString method. This line will output the enum value with the name method. And if you run this test to see the output, the values outputted are in the same case as entered into the enum. Sometimes you may want a different display value for each enum. A common use of the constructor properties and methods will allow for an alternate value for each enum. Use for display is one possibility. Let's open the door color enum and make a few changes. After the color red, add a parenthesis with a string value ruby red. This will be an additional data element associated to the value red. There is a syntax error. We will fix it shortly. Let me copy in the values for the remaining colors. If we hover over the error, it says expected zero arguments but found one. This argument is a parameter for a constructor. If we add a private constructor that accepts one string parameter, all the errors go away. Let me add one property for display color, add one getter, and align so the constructor sets the display color property. This is the complete door color enum with an additional value for display color. When the enum variable is set to a value, let's say blue. The constructor for blue is called and the string royal blue is passed as a parameter. The constructor assigns the parameter to a private property called display color. Anytime you need to know the value of the display color, you can call the getter. Let's look at a test inside the enum test file. This test will prove the display color value is returned. Here an enum variable is declared and set. Behind the scenes, the enum constructor is called and the display color property is set. The actual value variable is declared and set to the getDisplayColor method. 
These two lines will output the getDisplayColor method through the variable and directly from the enum. The assert will prove that royal blue is returned. If we run this test, it passes. Notice the output below. It has ruby red and royal blue. Here's a summary of all the code we wrote for this session. Door state, enum test, door color enum, door data structure. Here's a summary of the enum. An enum is short for enumeration. It is publicly available and cannot be changed. Enum values should be in all uppercase, but it's not required. An enum data type is a clue for other developers that this variable has a limited group of values. The new keyword is not needed to initialize the enum. It is common for enums to be used in a data structure as a property that never changes or as a property that holds object state. When comparing two enums, you can use the dot equals method or the double equal sign. The name and two string methods will return the text of the enum value. An enum can have a constructor, properties, and methods. The enum constructor should be declared as private or default. You should now have an understanding of the enum class used to create a custom data type that holds a restricted group of constant values. Code examples were provided along with an exercise where you should have built a door color enum. Enums work great inside a data structure to hold a value that typically doesn't change, along with holding an object state, a value that will change. This is the end of the part one series. Look for the part two series where we discuss object-oriented programming principles. Remember, future senior developers, make it work, prove it works, then make it better. Ready, break!